If you're looking to scale your business and learn from the best life and health insurance agents in the industry, you're in the right place. This is your host, Jason Hoffman, and you're listening to the Agents on the Move podcast, where we profile producers who are consistently at the forefront of the industry in production and management expertise. On this episode, we're joined by my good friend, Adam Richter. Adam is based out of Baltimore, Maryland. He's been an insurance producer and a team leader for 12 years. Although he's been blessed with the good looks of a young Tom Cruise and the charm of former President Ronald Reagan, what makes him different is what's on the inside and how he positively affects the lives of those he comes in contact with. I hope you enjoy the episode. Okay, 11 years, Mr. Richter. 12. 12 years. 12 years. So you came from the circus. So take us back to the circus and what took you out of it? Well, you know, I was uh, the the big ringmaster in the uh, the center ring, just calling it all in there. I actually was a, a show promoter back in the day, so I raised money for a bunch of different charitable organizations through the promotion of different events. And one of them was a circus, so that's why everybody says I was a circus guy. So I was, uh, you know, pretty entrepreneurial, and I was working for somebody else doing this out of school, and then I started my own business doing the same thing. And then basically it was a paradigm shift of a lot of different things happening at once, which sort of showed me the law of diminishing returns was happening and it was time to, to get out. So really it was um, kind of thing where when I was starting to look for work, all the, the headhunters who were kind of kids in my, my view, and they looked at me like I was an old man, basically did not have a lot of interest in an entrepreneurial type person who really kind of worked for themselves most of their career. And they didn't think I had much street value to corporate America. I mean, I kind of knew differently. You know, I, I happened to to bump into a, a friend of mine who worked for health markets. And then uh, we were just chatting over dinner, you know, at a bar somewhere. He was telling me what he was doing. And I said I needed some insurance potentially anyway. And then uh, the opportunity uh, sounded very interesting and took an interview a few days later. And I was like on the last training of that year in like 2009. Yeah, came right in, right around the time you did. So you're on board. How long did it take you to realize that you could do this, that you were going to be a success? You know, it's one of these things that didn't come super fast. And I thought with all my, you know, marketing and telemarketing, I trained probably a thousand people between all the businesses that I ran and, and was running of my own uh, and all the phone and sales work. But, you know, it was just a slightly different thing. And kind of unlearning and relearning some things. And so it took took probably about probably almost a month to two months. I was kind of the other thing I was I was kind of transitioning out of something else. So, you know, I wasn't 100% all in from the beginning, which I think slowed me down. You know, we always want everybody to go all in. And, you know, 100% effort gives 100% return. So I was probably guilty of that myself. So how long did it take you before you thought, hey, uh, I think I'm going to quit? Like, when did that thought cross your mind? Oh, that was never going to happen. So now I knew it was a good opportunity, but I wasn't quitting. Failure was not an option. So it was really just a matter of, of really understanding and learning it all. We didn't have a whole lot of training back then, and the platforms were very different from how they are now. So it was really just, I mean, it was so reading product guides that that were kind of a lot of redundant information and a lot of different booklets. So it was hard to disseminate what was what, you know, in the beginning to understand the differences. I mean, I actually was, my mom was real nearby. We would just sit and we'd study these product guides and try to understand the differences of what everything was to, to just kind of sift it through and then realize, you know, what was what. And then, you know, just kind of craft the approach a little bit. And then, you know, the first guy went to see I saw him like three times. I drove like 45 minutes to his house, like three different times and nothing with a non-result outcome. You know, it's like you sort of learn what was really happening in that, in that meeting, but that's a meeting you'll never forget. And it's kind of humorous in retrospect, which was pretty exasperating at the time. So usually people have the embarrassing moment in the insurance business. What was your fall on your face moment or when you could say you were like most embarrassed that you've been? I never really had any incredibly embarrassing ones. No tracking dog shit through somebody's oh, house. No. So I've had some, you know, maybe not embarrassing for me, but exasperating in what happened. I mean, you know, it was one of those deals where I was in a person's house and, you know, it was like one of these kind of 
really disheveled stuff everywhere kind of places. And I think like three litter boxes and, you know, seven cats. And there were my briefcase was as high up as I could possibly put it. So it wouldn't touch anything. And then like the cat got up to where it was and and sprayed it. So those are fun ones. Yeah, that was just the joy. And I don't even think I had a positive outcome on the appointment and I shouldn't have been there and I regretted going and I threw the briefcase away. So two months in, you're starting to see some success. Was it a straight line from there, like clear skies? Did you have any low points? Did you hit any hurdles along the way? Well, it wasn't blue skies everywhere. It was, you know, it was kind of fits and starts and and just kind of getting the hang of what was going on and just kind of slowly learning it. You know, I emulated all the people around me who were doing well in our agency and tried to take their lead as much as I could. You know, it seemed like it came fairly slowly. I mean, I had pretty lofty goals and I'm used to in sales jobs having high frequency production. So when it wasn't sort of like, you know, everything's happening every day, all day long, you know, you're kind of like, well, what's going on? You know, it's just a lot of hard phone dialing and grinding and sweat equity and really just, I'm a process guy. So it was really just kind of formulating a bit of a new process that was slightly different from what I was doing in the past in a lot of ways, you know, similar, but just slightly different and just figuring out the nuances to what was working and what wasn't. And then, you know, it slowly started to progress. It, it, it definitely took a few months to click in. Do you think you could pinpoint a low moment that you had, whether it's one specific thing and not necessarily in the first year, but over the course of 12 years? I mean, you know, it's, you know, there's these relative highs and lows that are just sort of, I guess it's kind of difficult to quantify. In my first year, my first few months, there was like this, it was a, it was a pretty, pretty good sale that had happened. And I was, I was pretty excited, helped this family out really well, thought I filled all their gaps and this and that. And then um, I think they decided to just cancel everything. And I was kind of like, wow, big charge back. You know, it was a big reversal on, okay, I'm getting this. I did really well. And now, you know, it's canceled. It's paid back. And then, you know, all that. So what do you do to get through those moments? Well, you know, I was bummed and you just kind of go on. I probably got a little more upset about it than I than I needed to or should have because I was mildly embarrassed that it had fallen right off thinking like, oh, okay, it's going well. And then. So do you have one idea or your, I guess your biggest idea that you could point to that really helped transform your business, help it take off? Well, it's going to be incrementally different, you know, different times and phases. I mean, in the beginning when you don't really know anything, you know, it's like I tell all the new agents I train, you're, you're sort of feeling around in the dark room and, you know, the lights aren't even on. And so you're trying to figure out what's in this room you know, which is different from when you're sort of way down the road, a seasoned agent, and you're really fine tuning nuances of just little fine grades of this to that. So, you know, in the early stage, it was really just kind of truly kind of understanding the process of how the health and the supplemental and everything kind of fit together. And and that was back when there was full medical underwriting. So, I mean, there wasn't pre-existing conditions being totally covered. I mean, this is a long time ago, really. I mean, it's like old school health insurance, you know, all the medical questions, which were like worse than writing life insurance questions, it seemed. I'd sit in an appointment for two or three hours trying to get through the, the health application. I mean, you remember that. It was just every condition, every medication. I mean, really fine lines of will they get it? Will they get a rate up? Looking at underwriting guides and all that kind of stuff. And then kind of having that horrible feeling that halfway through the appointment when you thought they had told you everything so you could prep for the appointment, you find out like a whole host of things they didn't tell you that completely changed the dynamic, what you expect to have happen. And then, you know, you're sort of backpedaling to try to make it work. I mean, those are not really knowing how to be completely prepared, you know, just because, you know, look, it's a book of knowledge. You got to, you know, add page by page by page through the, you know, the journey of learning everything, you know, then you, you kind of, see things coming, you understand them better. Was there a shift that happened at all in the market that helped you that you think you could point to or something that you did to grow your business? So, well, I don't know. I mean, a shift in the market. Well, I don't know. I mean, once we had some product changes and we had more access to different things was definitely very helpful. When we started having more lines of business that we could uh, help people with, that was also very helpful. 
you know, and just learning, learning those things. And then um, just really learning how to be organized and learning how to uh, handle all the situations. I mean, that was the big kind of breakthrough of what and how to do. And then I think the other thing was basically getting the pace of being able to run multiple appointments in a day. I mean, you know, one or one or two a day, a few a week was like, okay, versus doing like three to five appointments a day. I could do that like once or twice a week. And I was exhausted, you know, drove like 40, 50,000 miles a year. So, you know, you get buying the wheel of the car and then you got to run in the appointment and then you got to rush off the next one and try to stay on schedule with traffic and everything else going on versus, you know, the pace, getting the pace under your belt and being able to, you know, just it's like conditioning for anything, just, you know, your condition that you can, you can handle it. You're in, you know, you're sort of, you're in shape to do your job and then being able to utilize technology and electronic applications and zoom calls and everything, being able to accelerate everything and, and not have to do so much driving. You know, there's these little breakthroughs that continuously happen. So it's kind of, it's kind of difficult to pinpoint any one thing, but you know, there's a lot of things that happen over time. You know, I guess it's sort of like you have to look at whatever phase of their period you're thinking about. You mentioned all the miles and there's only so many years somebody can do that where you got to say, Hey, I got to be, I got to be way more efficient, whether that's doing it over the phone or driving a shorter distance, whatever that is. So you've done this now. You well, you've been a manager for eight years, maybe seven or eight years. So where you've trained and helped other agents get up and going, what do you think makes an effective leader? Well, you know, you got to really understand what you're training. So the thing that I value a lot for me and and a lot of for a lot of my peers who are manager trainers is that you know most of them are very proficient at doing the actual job instead of being up on an ivory tower, just talking about back in the day, back when I was out in the field 20 years ago, this is how we did it, driving uphill both ways in your car and you know this and that and the other. So the really positive piece is to really be on the pulse of the market of everything you're trying to train on so you can speak like an expert and be an expert instead of just anecdotally going from things that other people are telling you. So I think the firsthand piece is very important. You know, I guess one of the detriments can be that if you're like a real high top producer, that, you know, it's one of these things where, you know, one of my mentors said, look, you can't want it more than they do. And it's trying to understand when to kick it down a few notches because not everybody starting out is at that level. And, and you know, maybe they'll never be at that level. And, you know, wanting it more than they do and the frustration level of, trying to push rope, so to speak, you know, that you have to be patient and understanding of what's going on and then really try to put your your mind back to those early days of where you were and, and pace everything out. So from an experience standpoint, having done it and still do it is having the perspective of where people should be coming in and, and accommodating them in that, not only where they want to be, but also giving them the, the time and the patience to, uh, you know, learn and grow at a pace that's commensurate with, you know, having success eventually. So what's been your most satisfying moment, you know, helping other people or whether it's training agents or helping clients? Well, you know, it's kind of a different kind of piece of, you know, the, the gratification you get from helping people and, and helping your agents. So, I mean, they're both great and different levels of, you know, what you get back from what you're doing. So the biggest piece of me saying I'm doing noble work and, and really feeling a great sense of worth for what I'm doing, that I'm helping people and truly making a difference, unfortunately, is on a few really horrible situations where close friend died, young client, you know, died. And I had to, you know, I, I had to get the death benefits. I mean, they're super sad, you know, one was a dear friend of mine, he's one of my very best friends, pulled out in traffic, he was killed instantly, you know, he had a wife and like three kids, you know, finding out that that had happened and then, you know, having to, you know, to help process a death claim for like one of my best friends. While it was a lot of money, you know, he did need more life insurance and we had actually talked about it and um, we had an application that he was approved for and he just needed to sign it. And he was dragging his feet about it. Do I really need it? Do I not? And, you know, his needs analysis said he did. You know, he he finally said he was going to sign it. But the second one, he was about to sign the delivery and he didn't do it. And two days later, 
he pulled out in traffic and he was killed. And we're talking a million dollar policy that he had ready to be signed. I mean, his family, while they were very, very appreciative and grateful that, you know, we had gotten his one policy through, I mean, it was a million dollar policy, but it was another million that they would have gotten. And they saw the emails and the, the conversations back and forth with me urging him to do it, to finish it up. I mean, it's like these crazy emotional feelings. You know, the, the other one was this young girl family, you know, it's a longtime client. I help him in his restaurant. And then his, uh, it's like his wife is a client, all of her sisters are clients. So the one, you know, she kept kind of coming off and falling off the books, but we, you know, she was like this really just really, really nice person. She always means well, but she just was a little tight on money at times, but we got her back in the books multiple times. And then, you know, she really didn't have a death benefit need, but she wanted to have life insurance. We had you know, gotten her through a few different policies and then got this one back on. She wanted to make sure, God forbid, something should happen. She's 23 years old. So like not even, you know, first payment was made, not even 30 days in, she somehow, another car accident. She, she had a single car accident. She ran off the road and hit a telephone pole, you know, three in the afternoon, was killed instantly. I mean, it was like, the saddest thing in the world when I saw it on Facebook, I think my wife told me, she saw it. She said, I think this is one of our clients. And I was like, Oh my God. Cause then I knew, you know, how close they were to me. And then, it, you know, all ran through my mind was the phone calls I was going to have to make about this and how, how hard that was going to be, but how important it was. And so, you know, that was like $200,000 to this family that really needed the money. You know, they were scraping together. The, the dad just, you know, he can't stop, telling me how much he appreciates taking care of his daughter and the family. I mean, so those are like, I'm sorry, it's like so depressing, but it's like, it's so, it's really, you know, if you, if you want to sort of crystallize why you do a job like this, I mean, obviously we like to get paid well, but you want to make a difference in people's lives. I mean, make huge differences. I'm telling you, no one's ever going to forget anybody who's ever delivered one of those big claims. You know, you're, you're going to be a person in their life that they're going to remember is probably one of the top handful of people that made a, like a massive difference to them. So to push it back to the, on the agent aspect of it, you know, kind of come out of that, sorry, it was like kind of heavy, you know, so the really gratifying piece there is, is really when, you know, you, you bring someone in and, and, and they have great success, whether it's a struggle to have great success or whether they have, you know, great success, you know, they, in their mind, that level of success is great success. So we, you know, we look at goals and, you know, whether people have modest goals, they're hitting and exceeding them and they're really excited about it or they have lofty goals and they hit or exceed them. I mean, that's extremely gratifying to have somebody come in from a, a field of whatever they've done. Nothing ever like this before. Never thought about insurance. Maybe they were one of my clients. Maybe they're a friend of mine. I mean, I have people from all walks of life that I know have come in and had a good handful of them had really great, great success. And that's really, that's just so rewarding, you know, because, you know, you got somebody who comes in as a, you know, it's a teacher and a student, and then it's kind of like your colleagues to where they're at the point where they've learned this business so well, and they've achieved such, you know, high levels doing it the right way. It's really an awesome feeling. I mean, because you've changed another person's life forever in another way. Like I said, it's the kind of thing where those people will never forget you and appreciate everything you did to help them get to there. So I think it kind of, you know, in different roads, they kind of converge in that what ultimately is happening, how you're affecting and changing people's lives. Well, I think it a lot of it comes back to it's more satisfying when good things happen to people you care about than to yourself personally. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's great to make, you know, a great living and, and that's very rewarding in some way. But yeah, you know, it's it's really great to have, you know, people be helped when they need it most, whether it's a new agent coming in, coming off of, not being able to do anything career-wise, you know, or, or a person who really needs, you know, help in a big way. Sometimes there's some of those folks who just, they don't know where to turn. You know, th those are the ones that are really also gratifying because they have no idea what to do. And we, we help navigate them through and whether it's get them on a Medicaid plan and now they can all of a sudden see doctors because they're flat broke and they get not a penny to pay. And we just do an act of kindness to, to get them onto something that we make nothing off of or just anybody who's like on a qualified health plan that, Again, they couldn't figure it out. They didn't know what plan to get on. And it's generally the ones that are a little more complicated. So it really takes some understanding their need from the fact-finding needs analysis and the product 
that's going to mesh together and do it that's going to be affordable to help them save a lot of money, get the care they want, and let them sleep at night, you know, because they're all freaked out. We're in some different times, buddy, but what's one of the biggest surprises you've had in the, in the last few months and, and why? The industry or my own business or? Just with COVID in general and the insurance business. Well, the interesting part is that, you know, through the whole COVID thing, there wasn't really any major surprises because for our industry, you know, we were already built out to do everything that we're doing. I mean, I've been doing Zoom calls and, you know, we have the, the compliance pieces on DocuSigns and everything else. So we can do everything telephonically and through, you know, computer to do appointments and I mean, it was really just the the mental hurdle, I guess, of everybody going through this whole crazy COVID thing and then being there shrink for the first few months of it because everybody was freaking out. So they needed somebody to talk to and, you know, just taking a step back and allowing people to do that for an extra hour and appointment to, you know, make sure that their sanity is being addressed and then, you know, help them with their insurance. So I don't know. I mean, I guess there wasn't that many, oddly enough, really big surprises per se. Is there some ways it has made you better? Well, I think it definitely did. That's the one thing is that I think it's just learning from some of these things when the, the target changes a little bit on how your day works. You know, it changed that dynamic a bit and trying to do really good active listening and, you know, just letting people talk and not putting a stopwatch on it. Sometimes we have to be a little more concerned about our days and time, depending on seasonality, what time of the year it is when we're like an open enrollment, we have less time. But last March was really just sort of sitting down, taking a breath, you know, shoulders down, just being like, okay, and really just listening to people talk and let them get everything off their stuff that they had to. And then, you know, helping them just that. And I don't know, I guess just the volume of people you help, but it's just kind of getting organized, coordinated, and just the ability to help people and help people and help people and help people. What are some of the uh, good choices that you've made in your business or just in life in general that have helped make you who you are? Well, I mean, the, the best choice I made was to, you know, understand that there was a paradigm shift in what I was doing previous to this and that it was time to, to do something different. The best choice, I guess, was I went and had dinner at the Austin Grill, you know, back in November of 2009, I met Mark Grinspoon and we started talking and then I took that interview. That was a pretty pretty good thing. What do you think you would tell uh, somebody that was brand new to insurance or, or an agent that's kind of just starting out? What's the one piece of advice that you would give them? Well, I mean, you know, the, the first thing is really, like I tell everybody, is to really have to check everything at the door that you think you're bringing in and just pay attention to the people. Let's say you're where we work. Okay. So that's, everything's legitimate. You know, you got great people who do this job well and you pay attention and you copy what they do and you parrot it until you understand it and then you know you refine it and you follow it you just kind of learn the process and follow process and really just if you're going to start a job it's 40 hours a week you got to find a way to fill 40 hours otherwise you're not really working and I think that that's the hardest thing for a lot of people is to understand what 40 hours really means because a lot of people aren't built to work for themselves having all that free time to yourself to decide, well, I'm going to go lay on the couch or I'm going to go in the kitchen, eat something, or I'm going to go watch Oprah. I'm going to go for a walk, you know, find a million things to keep you busy. You know, I'm going to read the internet while I'm trying to make phone calls, but 10 minutes later you made one phone call and you're reading about sports. So just understanding the focus and how to work for yourself, I think is a big deal. If you had to pick one thing and, you know, it doesn't have to be one thing, but is there anything you do over in your business career? Not really. I mean, I, it went about how it should. So if it was too easy necessarily in the beginning, you know, perhaps I wouldn't have tried so hard. I mean, it was rookie of the year, my first full year. And so, you know, I've really, really worked hard at it to get to that. That was extremely gratifying. That I mean, that's like one of my top career anywhere achievements, hitting the top 10 with health markets, you know, many years in a row. Really gratifying, you know, being a top producer in a top company. A lifetime. It's very rewarding that I've made a mark in a really big organization and that, you know, I've helped so many people along the way to get there, agents, families, you know, you name it. Do you have anything that you start your day with, like a morning or daily routine? 
Well, you know, I got this really great coffee machine. So uh, <laughs> that's after the dogs are walked, you know, get up, walk the dogs, get the coffee uh, machine going, you know, have a cup of coffee or two, make one of those like crazy fruit and veggie shakes out of the, the bullet and get all that kind of done and, and actually just sit down with my breakfast shake drink some water and workspace is open and ready you know pretty much just sit down and hit the uh, space bar to wake my computer up and all the actions for the day should have been set forward from the previous day so you know opening up your database management system and your daily calendar should be built so it's not sort of trying to figure out what my day is my day is laid out because I've done preparation in a pipeline day after day after day so Today, for example, you know, leading up to this call, you know, I had to make sure that I pretty much got all my calls out of the way. I had like literally two people I got to talk to after we're done who want me to call them after certain hours. So, I mean, just organization and just trying to be efficient and disciplined, just following my own rules. You know, you've got stuff in your, you know, your daily to-do minder saying you got to do it. Well, you can't just ignore it and just keep kicking the can down the road and moving it down the line. You know, it's actually... Do the difficult parts and do whatever you got to do on each particular call. Each task is slightly different and just, you know, sucking it up and doing it. So out of the many recommendations that you've given me, the coffee machine is up there in the top three. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. So what's uh, one thing that very few people know about you? What's one thing that very few people know about me? I don't know, man. Like I'm a great athlete. You know, I'm a real kick-ass snowboarder, national, international snowboarding uh extraordinaire skiing since i was four all my outdoor sports i like to do um you're deceptive mm -hmm. i can vouch for your snowboarding expertise by the way <laughs> so it's uh i have a witness so if money was no object and you didn't have to worry about money what do you think you'd do for a career if money was no object meaning like if i could just do whatever i wanted to do and it didn't matter whether it paid a lot or a little yeah you know kind of like what i do so I kind of like doing this. Uh, you know, it's good to get compensated for what you do. It kind of keeps you moving every day. I got to think of a job that I would do. That's it, difficult because I'd probably just get bored doing whatever it is. If it was some whatever. Oh, yeah. So I guess I'd, I'd want to be a rock star. We'll just say that. Okay. Yeah. All right. There you go. Right. Except you can't sing. So. Oh, I can sing. I can sing. Well, there's another thing most people don't know is that I, you know, I, I can sing, play guitar, and I've written about 50 songs. So. Oh, there you go. There's that. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll have to hear you sing. I've never heard you sing. Yeah. Yeah. I could grab a guitar and do it right now. <laughs> so what's one thing you'd recommend to other people that helps you, that you draw inspiration from, whether it's reading or writing? Crazy thing is that, you know, like I'm working so much and when I'm not working, I'm trying to kind of decompress my brain. I don't actually read much other than just like, you know, news, sports, garbage reading, and and, and all the insurance guides and manuals and about products. I mean, there's always reading that stuff. What ways do you decompress? I mean, a decompress is, you know, go run or bike or, you know, go jet ski or boating or snowboarding or paddle boarding. You know, when I'm living at the beach, it's like get up in the morning, do my the morning, all that stuff. And then before I get work and take a bike ride to the beach, take a swim maybe go paddle boarding and then get to work, you know, in the morning when it's winter and it's not warm like that, you know, it might be, you know, get up to a bike ride or a run or something like that. Same kind of thing. If I can do those things later in the day, if my day allows it to unwind like that, I mean, that's like the best because stuff that you can't really, a lot of it's like, you can't be thinking about other things when you're, you know, I like to immerse myself in activity where you're, you get lost in that activity. So you can't really think about the other stuff. I mean that oddly enough, and like, Silly home improvements like, you know, painting or fixing a shelf or whatever, installing a shelf or fixing whatever. Like I fixed my washing machine this last weekend, which was incredibly gratifying. Well, some of the sometimes those mindless things help us, you know, take our mind off of. Yeah, it's brainwash because, you, you know, washes all your, you know, what you do out and it sort of like stimulates a different part of your brain. So, yeah, that, that kind of stuff, just, you know, fixing stuff. Well, my friend, you are off the stand here. So thank you very much for joining us. I'm sure people will get a lot of value in, in listening to you. I didn't cry. Well, I almost Roy Firestone, you. Yeah, that was close. I'm not going to so. cry, Roy. I'm not going <laughs> to cry. All right, buddy. 
Everyone, thank you for listening to the latest episode of the Agents on the Move podcast. You can subscribe to the show wherever you listen to your podcast. If you thought the content was beneficial to you, please subscribe to the show, write a review if you'd like. We look forward to joining you again. Thanks.